For 26-year-old Surrey lad Tom Bull, life is all about friends, fun and football. But behind his super-fit sportsman exterior, Tom hides an embarrassing secret. He's addicted to beans and chips. Nothing else will do. I don't know why or how I started eating baked beans and chips. I just remember that's all I've ever really eaten. That's been my main meal every day. And he washes it all down daily with an incredible four pints of milk. Anything else is strictly out of bounds. No, nah, chips, chips, chips. Nah, really? <laughs> Just a little bit. <laughs> chips, chips, chips. Right, Thought of eating other foods. Scares the life out of me, to be honest. Helping Tom to beat the beans will be nutritionist Charlotte Watts and psychologist Felix Economakis. Over the next four weeks, they'll give him just the push he needs, make him see his dire diet's not funny anymore. I'd actually like you to do a very quick stand-up routine. No, why? <laughs> Force him to confront some home truths. I have to grow up and start doing things for myself. You've come to that conclusion yourself. Well, I've come to that conclusion with help. And encourage him to face the foods he's spent a lifetime avoiding. But after 26 years of freaky eating, it's not going to be easy. <laughs> 26 year old Tom Bull is a single bloke living at home with his mum and dad, Jill and Simon. He has a successful career as an IT consultant and is footy mad, playing at least four times a week. But one thing he's not so passionate about is food. Tom has spent his life surviving on a bizarre diet of nothing but beans and chips. And even Tom's beloved beans and chips must conform to strange rules. I like to keep them separate. I don't really like it with the beans touching the chips. Like, chips would all be covered in the beans juice. When he can't get hold of his mainstays, he fills up on litres of milk. Probably have about two of these a day. And yet more potatoes. Put all my crisps in here. Eat about eight bags a day. Fruit and veg don't get a look in. What about the salad? No, thanks. I don't want to eat leaves. And someone says, why don't you try this instead? I just think, no, because the last time I tried something, I felt all uncomfortable, hot start sweating and sort of panicking and just feeling really nervous. Having never moved on from his childhood diet means Tom still even eats like a child. 26 years old, I should know how to use a knife and fork properly, but I only need a fork for my baked beans and a fork for my chips. And if that wasn't bad enough, even chewing is a struggle. I've tried chewing beans before, but it just doesn't feel natural to me. So I just swallow them. I can't help it, I put them in my mouth. My... In they go and they're gone. Sound like all right, pig. Tom's freaky eating started when he was a baby and refused to eat most solid foods. It was from milk, basically, to things like a packet of skips and then beans. Tom has two younger sisters who grew up eating a normal diet. But his parents fought a losing battle when it came to Tom. I mean, I remember a few traumas at the table, having to... Uh try and encourage him to eat some different foods, but it just never happened. It isn't the fact that he started eating meat or cheese or anything like that. He's never started. He's never tasted those things. Growing up, even Christmas and birthdays had to be chips. We'll all sit down and have a Christmas meal, and he'll sit there with his um, happy chips. Tom may be 26, but his mum still looks after her little boy. I always make sure that in the house we have the foods that he will eat. But outside the home, his mates are less supportive. You just feel like everybody's looking at you. And to be out and feel like that is not comfortable. And um, what can I get for you, sir? Can I just have a side order of fries, please? <laughs> <laughs> It's even started to affect his work, forcing him to lie to get out of professional lunches with clients. I make up stories all the time when people say, oh, should we go and get some lunch? I'll say, oh, um, I'm not really hungry. I've been ill, I've said before, and I'll be starving. But I'll put it off till the end of the day when I know I can get something I want to eat. At 
At mealtimes, it's not just food he's uncomfortable around, preferring to eat alone. And his freaky eating is taking its toll on those closest to him. When we want to go out for special occasions with the family, we have to make um, provision for Tom or just not invite him. It would be lovely for us all to be able to just go out and eat together and not have that horrible feeling for me because... Um... Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry, I can't do that bit. Sorry. It's make or break time for Tom. I want to do it for my health reasons. I want to do it for my friends, for my family. I want to see what I'm missing out on and I want to be able to enjoy all these situations where you should be able to eat. It's day one. Felix and Charlotte have invited Tom to London to kickstart his Battle of the Beans. Hey, Tom. Felix, nice to meet nice you. Nice to meet you. Hello, Hello. Charlotte. Hello. Hi, Charlotte. You're right. Yeah, yeah good. good. How are you doing so far? A bit nervous. Yeah. Well, it's natural to have some nerves. That's to be expected, isn't it? But you're in safe hands. Are you yeah. ready? I think I am. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. okay. Now we're looking to help you change the habits of 26 years here. We've got a lot of work to do. Yeah, I know. So we'll leave you to watch this and then we'll come back and have a chat to you, okay? Yeah, sure. Cheers. Tom begins by listening to a few home truths from his fearful family and friends. Tom, we're all really proud of you for taking this first step. It would be nice if you could enjoy a meal with us and actually enjoy the time we spend together and not have to worry about running off as soon as you can. The fact of the matter is, if you carry on eating chips and beans like you do, um, it can't be healthy for you. I mean, we can tell that by the fact that you take these knocks and you get really badly bruised. And to be quite honest with you, mate, I'd like to know you for many years to come. We really think this is a chance for you to actually change now. You're 26. If it's not going to happen now, I don't think it ever will. And we do worry about your health and we do want you to experience other things. We find it very difficult sometimes to um, work things around you. I'm sure once you've got over that problem, we can share a lot more as a family. Hello, how was that for you? Yeah, it's quite powerful, wasn't it, really? Yeah, I thought so. Mm. I thought your dad was particularly moving in there. Yeah, my dad was a bit... He never really said anything like that to me. Whereas my mum's like that all the time. I think that's the thing that got me feeling a bit yeah. awkward about it. Just or men upset about it. Don't always yeah. know how to express it, do mm. they? But it doesn't mean they don't feel it. No, I know, yeah. So what could you take from what you've seen today, Tom, that will help you just down the line? Like everything that people have just said then, that they, they care about me and they want me to be there. Mm. You know, like one of my friends, Daniel, just said then, mm. you know, but I want to spend many more years with you. Mm. Yeah. And when people say it like that, you realise how yeah. like how much how much it affects them. So if you do want to change, we need to start by really looking at your diet and really work out where we can go from here. You ready? Ready, yeah. OK, right. let's go. OK. But will facing up to the stark reality of his diet be enough to make him change? <laughs> Look at all this. Yeah, there's a lot, isn't there? You've been eating chips, beans and milk day in, day out for the last 26 years. It's all the same, isn't it? It's like a little kid's party. Tom, you're a free man. Yeah. You've got a choice. Mm. And this is what you're taking into your body. It's pretty, well, disgusting, really. Yeah. If that's not bad enough, there's still Tom's greasy crisp habit to look at. You eat eight packets a day. Yeah. That's over 3,000 packets a year. That's over 22,000 grams of fat, which is represented by the lard over there. Oh. Yeah. Mm. That presents a real heart disease risk. It's concerning, really, when you talk about how much fat and everything that I'm putting through my body, and especially when you start talking about my heart, it really mm. does make you worry. And uh, I think... Just because every, this is what I do every day, I don't think about the impact of what it's mm. going to have long-term. 
Yeah. So, and then when you put it all out in front of you, you just think, God, that's a lot of junk. Yeah. So what we need to know from you so that we can help you work towards this mm -hmm. is what you want to achieve at the end of the four weeks. OK. Well, I'd like to get onto more healthier food, mm. obviously. OK. As a very specific goal that we're going to aim towards, you're going to sit down with your family and have a varied meal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how Good. strongly are you committed to that goal right now? Yeah, more than ever standing around all of this. <laughs> The health aspect seemed to be the most shocking aspect for him and that's going to work really well for me but it's also incredibly clear that he knows nothing about food and he wants to be educated. So it's all positive but it's clear he's got a really long way to go. As Tom heads back to Surrey, the day has given him food for thought. 22,000 grams worth of fat goes into my body a year. It's just disgusting. That's been going on for 26 years. It just made me realise how bad and what bad shape my body must be, and even though I exercise a lot, and uh, made me realise how much I've got to work on changing my diet. He's not the only one who thinks it's time for change, as Tom gets a grilling on his return home from friend JP and his mum. I know how much everyone cares, so like that, and I know how much it affects him everybody and how they want me to change my health reasons. Do you, though? Do you know that? Because we don't know whether you actually yeah, take I do that know. on board. Yeah, No-one's ever actually told you how they feel, have they, really, deep down. None no. of us have. Me, Adam, Dan... None of no, us you always say, I'd have... like you to be. Yeah, yeah, we've said it, yeah. and then it's, it's all been like, yeah, sort of brushed been... off. I mean, yeah. now you've sat there and you've watched that and you know how all, we all feel, you know, really deep down seriousness that, you know, it's got to change really, isn't it? Yeah, and then with that and I'd say that and seeing all that food and how much that fat and how much problems it could cause me. Clog up your arteries. Yeah, and when I was talking to her, like, off the camera, like, when, they, when we were just standing there chatting, yeah. like, my... Arms, hands were going all pink again. Like, you know, sometimes yeah. they go purpley pink. Mm. She's explaining, you know, it's bad liver, not through drinking or anything like that, through all the fat in my diet. My body's toxicated, so it's mm. trying to clear out through, like, sweat or circulation. Do you think the next step's going to be easier? No, I don't think it's going to be easier, but I think it's achievable. Good. I feel like I can... I can, I can do it now. <laughs> The root of Tom's eating problem remains a mystery to his family. Today, Felix will be doing some psychological digging to see what secrets his past might hold. What's your earliest possible memory with regards to eating this way? I don't remember, ever remember eating anything different. It's always been milk and then chips, baked beans. I don't remember eating baby food ever. And your mum can't shed any light on it. She never said once you had um, a severe reaction or you threw up. Or... No, there's no, no reaction. She just said it was difficult to move me through the food, different food. Um, and there's nothing else that, that you can think, oh, well, you see, um, I won't like their food. I can't like it because of some other kind of worry or tension around it. OK? I don't know what it is that okay. stops me. All right. But I know that when, it, that when food does come out, I dismiss it straight away. Right. And just tell me a little bit about how your family has sort of reacted to you, you know, historically. So at some point they thought you're a young kid, you'd grow out of it. I think I'm mum's only boy. Hmm. And I think that's quite obvious sometimes. How? Because she lets me get away with murder. Does she? Yeah, well, yeah. With Tom drawing blanks around his eating memories, Felix moves on to football. Age 13, Tom achieved every boy's dream when he was scouted by professional football club Crystal Palace. However, a knee problem at 16 forced him to take time out. A year later, Tom was able to return to football, but he chose to join a local club with friends where he felt more comfortable. When, when did you start playing football again? I think I was 17 and a half, about 17. So you only stopped for a year and... A year and a bit, yeah. Were they interested in um, you trying again when you re um, No, because I don't think I would have been good enough then. Um, and also... Uh, how how do you know that? In, uh, well, I would have missed a quite a bit of important time out, but I didn't think I personally would have been good enough. And I was enjoying it where I was, I suppose, with my friends. So no-one 
no external authority told you, you know, sorry, you're past it, you've missed that. No, no, no. I, I don't think I'd, I don't think I believed in myself anymore. And I, 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 I just, I, I think I was maybe worried about failing again. Again, compared to what? Not doing it the first time round. For that kind of fear, that fear needs to be strong to stop you doing a, a dream when you had a, a real chance to do it. Mm. And what is that fear? fear? You said fear of failure, is it? That is it something else? Or? I don't know, maybe I accepted it and just thought, this is good enough for me where I am now. I don't know. This is good enough for me where I'm at. It's a bit like food, well, I don't really know. Yeah, maybe, I yeah. could have better, but this is good enough for me. Yeah, maybe I didn't think about how much better it could be again. Yeah. Maybe I just went, I'm enjoying this, let's just keep enjoying this. For my part, there's still quite a lot of answered questions. Yeah. So I look forward to us working together again and finding more pieces of this puzzle. Yeah, sure. OK. Tom's problems with food seem to have stemmed from fairly typical childhood fussy eating behaviour. But now as an adult, he's stuck in these childhood patterns and is using food as a way of avoiding his adult insecurities and fears. So I need to look at the origins of Tom's fears and try to find more clues as to how his eating problem started. It's very difficult when people are asking you, so how do you think you felt back then? I, I can't remember what I was like when I was five and what I was thinking when I was three, so to try and get into my head when I was three years old to work out why I am like I am now, I found it very difficult. And for me, I don't need clarification to say, oh, it was that that stopped you. I just need to know how to deal with um, getting over my fear of eating. Charlotte wants Tom to start eating a new, healthier diet. So her first challenge to him is to ditch the crisps. Oh, never thought I'd do this. <laughs> Say goodbye to my crisps. <laughs> I love my crisps and I've got all my favourite ones in here as well. I want to cry. <laughs> this was the actually only thing that I enjoyed eating. I know it's not good for you, but it was the nicest bit of the day. Tom will need all his determination if he's to get through his next session with Charlotte. Today, he'll have to face a table full of food he has never tried before. The fact that Tom goes days without food and skips many, many meals and exercises an enormous amount means that he really is almost in famine mode. His body's in crisis. So I need to see what his relationship is when presented with new foods so that I can start the process. It'll be a big challenge to get Tom to try anything. This is the, the first big step, really, because I need to make sure that I can eat something, otherwise I'm going to feel like I'm not going to progress. So it's the food part. The worst part. What has stopped you trying new foods in the past? I don't know why. Every time I think I'm going to try something, I think, oh, it's going to make me feel sick or something. Do you, do you mean feel the sick or actually vomit? Mouth. Oh, no, I feel sick now. Right, just being... No, it uh, might be butterflies. Yeah, And, yeah. and knowing that I'm, I'm going to try something, cos I am going to try something, so... You are. So you definitely have this, I'm ready now. I'm ready to start trying. Do you want to pick up the cucumber to start with, then? OK, do you want to use a fork? Yeah. <laughs> That's another yeah. thing for me. After a lifetime of eating beans and chips, Tom has never had to use a knife and fork together. So after a crash course, it's back to the food. So you put it down yeah. and cut with a knife. Just a little bit, because I'm yeah. going to have to eat this, aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> well anticipated. OK. Hard. Yeah, it was Your face hard. was really kind of all the muscles yeah. were going all over the place, yeah. I like, kept chewing and chewing. I was thinking, now, right now, swallow, and it was just sort of getting stuck there. So so much this is about not the it's not the taste, it's the Yeah, I guess it's the chewing, isn't it? Mm. I've never thought of it like this way, really. Mm. Um, Can, should we go to the tomato? Okay. Work up to it. I'll take it want. with the knife because I'm shaking. You're shaking. 
Yeah, because I'm nervous. It's a result for Tom and Charlotte. For the first time ever, he's eating new food, but it's still only baby bites. Oh, this doesn't look like it's going to be fun at all. Get it on the fork. Oh. You are taking incredibly small mouthfuls. I will go like this, I'll go like that, and I'll a bit of that, and I'll probably have a bit of that, and I'll go like that, and I'll go like that. Yeah, it's a whole mouthful, isn't it? That's a decent. <laughs> 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 yeah, <laughs> what I'm doing is like baby sizes, baby steps. Before he leaves, Charlotte wants him to try some of the more challenging foods. The fish, to me, is uh, would be harder for me to try than the chicken, and the chicken's a no, the fish is a no-no. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> That's broccoli, isn't it? That's broccoli. Everyone keeps telling me how good broccoli is, but they'll hate it. Oh, what bit should I eat, though? Well, it's usually good to eat a bit of the stalks and the leaves at the same time. So oh, I couldn't do that. I can't do that much. Just not that much. So. Too much for me. Well done, though. But it, oh, it's just too much in my mouth. Yeah, I think the reason I tried stuff today was because she didn't let me do all the normal things that I would do, like start judging it. I've just taken baby bites of different foods today. I need to be taking platefuls of that or having a decent portion of that, so I'm a million miles away from where I need to be or where I want to be. Tom has been eating so little up till now, he's been virtually starving his body. Charlotte wants him to work up to three regular meals, starting with breakfast. Try a bowl of whole wheat cereal, some wholemeal toast, muesli or porridge. All right, this is going to be hard work. That's banana, so I'll try and not look at that bit. But after the taster table, cereal is easier than expected. It's all right. Not bad. 26 years of me saying, I'm not going to try it and not even attempting it because I thought I was going to be sick. Now I know I'm not going to be sick. I'm quite willing to try food, so it's quite exciting. Today, Tom will meet Dr Pixie McKenna, a GP with a special interest in eating disorders. What Dr Pixie can provide today is exactly the extent of what his diet is doing to him and how he needs to change that. And I think he needs those specifics to motivate him. Although sports mad Tom seems super fit, his restrictive diet means he suffers from easy bruising, shaky hands and bad circulation. Dr Pixie has run medical tests on Tom and has the shocking results. When we looked at your blood, you've got some problems with your blood cells. You've got big, fat, red blood cells. In fact, you've got the red blood cells of an alcoholic. Oh, right, OK. Someone who lives on a really, really poor diet and only gets their calories from alcohol. No, yeah, well, yeah. Although Tom only drinks moderately, his diet is wreaking havoc with his blood cells and, therefore, his bone marrow. This is a nice, healthy bone marrow of a cow. You're just not putting the right stuff into the recipe. If this stops working, you're in trouble. Bone marrow produces red and white blood cells and platelets. Healthy red blood cells are essential because they carry oxygen around the body and give you energy. For Tom to improve his fat red blood cells, he needs to eat red meat, leafy greens and citrus fruits. Adding into the fact there's absolutely no vitamin C in his diet exactly. at all, and that will add to easy bruising because your ability for your veins to be integral and continually repairing themselves is very much compromised. Another potential problem is Tom's habit of swallowing his baked beans whole, which could affect his digestive system. As a long-term scenario, that's going to cause damage. It's going to cause inflammation in your esophagus, in your food pipe. 
then you're passing all this undigested mm. stuff into your gut. So it's putting pressure on the muscle walls here. The muscles are going to become weaker because they've got too much work to do and they're going to start to bulge and you become very unwell with stomach pain, diarrhea, temperature. Yeah, I don't really want you know? to end, do I? The body's incredibly adaptive, but it needs certain yeah, you fuels need to give it, you and need to give it a chance, nutrients yeah. to do that. Okay. So are you going to give it a shot? I'm going to give it a shot. Good. I've always sort of known that what I'm doing is not good for me, but I've never really known the effects. Like, I have these, like, little things like handshake and stuff, and I think, well, it's only my handshaking. But when the doctor explains what it all relates to and shows you, like, the insides and what's going to happen in the future, it makes more sense and it makes you think, cool, I've got to do it now. To help Tom change, more clues about the cause of his eating problems are needed. Hello. And Charlotte is visiting his mum to see if she can shed any light on his early years. Can you remember what happened when he first started to eat solid food? He didn't, he had trouble going on to solid food. It, right. That was the problem. What did you try? Basically, you know, you would sit there and you would have an array of different fruits and yeah. things and just take it at his time to see whether he would try anything because if you tried to say, oh, go on, you know, yeah. encouraging, just flat refusal, and he would just go off and play. So what did you do when he did that? Well, generally gave in. You know, I, I, probably I was just too soft because by this time as well, I'd had another child. Right. So, um, his sister is only a, a year and ten days younger than him. And then, you know, Katie would get upset and say, oh, no, Mum, please, don't, don't. And so she'd cry oh, and say, don't right. force okay. him. So she would get upset. Then you'd think, oh, what do we do now? Yeah. How much have you been involved in his diet then since he's essentially been an adult? I must admit, I haven't forced him to eat, or I haven't encouraged him to eat anything in the mm. last few years because I've always felt it's got to come from him now because it, it, it won't make any difference what I do. So he's set this context that him just eating chips and beans is normal and basically everyone else has kind of fallen into line with that? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah, basically, yes. He's trained you all. He has trained us all very, very well. Mm. Mm. I am slightly worried about whether or not Tom has got the chance here to grow up or not. I mean, it's something he clearly needs to grab. Everyone is pleased that he's doing this, but he needs to be given the space to grow up and be an adult on his own. If he doesn't get that, then he doesn't necessarily have a reason to push himself forward, and he really needs to do that now. To keep up the pressure on Tom to try new foods, Charlotte has sent him his second hamper. She wants him to start eating lunch, but he's never even made a sandwich, let alone eaten one. Oh, that's a lot of ham. Well, I suppose I'd better fill it up with these, better than I don't know. I'm not used to doing this. I think, I think that looks horrible. I don't want to eat that. Ooh. So, here we go. After only one bite, Tom jacks it in. It looks like the next three weeks are going to be hard work. The following evening, Tom meets with Felix, who's got a funny feeling he can help with Tom's food phobias. One of the suspicions I have in working with Tom is that he might have a bit of a fear of failure. So he's got a very strong security base with his family and friends, and they're always there kind of buffering him. I want him to do some things on his own, to take some risks. So what I've designed for him today is something that I really don't think he's going to like. I think it's going to really push him up there um, through his fear barrier. But I'm hoping he'll learn something from this, which will really help him to unblock those fears he has around food. OK, just through here. So far, you've been using humour as a kind of mechanism to avoid things that you should do. And I really want you to start using humour 
as a way to confront what's holding you back and those fears. I'd actually like you to do a very quick stand-up routine. No way. <laughs> I wouldn't know what to say. <laughs> yeah. How are you doing right now? I'm hating it. Tom will join other first-timers at an open mic night. And on hand to give him a crash course in stand-up is comedian Martin Besserman. This has got to come from you. It's got to be your story, OK? But, like, I've got funny habits, like, I've never eaten with a knife and fork before. Yeah. That is funny, and, and, and you should write that down. After working on a routine together, he can only wait for his curtain call. This summer. <laughs> OK, and how many of you are travelling? One man. <laughs> I feel sick. Physically sick, but... just got to hold it down and get on with it. Actually, I'd rather try food than do this. I'm not going to be good. <laughs> I'm not going to be funny. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, um, this man has never, ever done stand-up before. Please give a very warm welcome to Tom Ball. <laughs> Basically, they told me I've got to stand up and talk to you guys for five minutes. And being a bloke, you know you're going to get one or two minutes, so you're not going to get a lot. <laughs> so I'm just going to. Anyway, my phobia is about eating, so I don't really eat very well. All I eat is chips, beans, and that's it. That's all I've eaten in my life. So they're trying to scare the shit out of me by putting me up here, and I'd rather go for a curry right now, to be honest. <laughs> and, uh, it's just not, nothing I've ever done. So I'm just going to tell you a few stories how it's hard for me. So like, so we go out to a restaurant, we order. The waitress comes around, she takes everyone's orders. She's like, what would you like for your starter? I've never had a starter in my life. <laughs> so, so I just said chips. And then I thought, oh, that's it, my work here is done. She comes back round and says, what do you want for your main? I just went, chips. <laughs> I didn't know what to say. And then she said, dessert. I said, well, you know the answer. <laughs> Tom Paul, one more time for Tom Paul. Tom, I'm so impressed with what you just did. What I really like to you to realise here is the difference between expectation and then reality. Your expectation was this is going to be an awful experience. The actual reality was it wasn't too bad. I feel pleased that I did that. I'm glad I didn't run away from it, basically. Yeah. And what, what will you take away from this experience? I've got to do the same with foods. I've just got to get up there and go for it. So I think after that, he realizes, I can do this stuff. You know, I don't have to think of myself as um, unable to do these things, and I need to um, ask my friends to help me. I can do uh, you know, amazing things on my own. And that's the first step to sort of growing up and being an independent adult human being. Twenty-four hours later, and Tom is back with his friends. Not enough meat. Not enough iron in your diet. Not enough iron. I've walked upstairs and there's all these chairs laid out. You've got to so stand up and do a comedy. No. I had to do a five minute set as a stand up. Shut and they gave me up. half an hour notice. No, and I had to get up on the fourth act and do that, yeah. What, in front of all these people? It's about 40 people. How does that help your team? Getting over the fear. Because I'm scared of food, but it, you know, it, it's a fear to me, so it's trying to get me over that fear, overcoming fears. Then, with his newfound confidence, he manages a slice of cheese and tomato pizza, and there are no chips in sight. Do they not give us anything to cut it with? It's already cut. OK, cool. I want this one. This is mine. What have you got on yours? Pepperoni. It's hot, isn't it? Mm. That's just been cooked. But is this bad for me? It's not something you'd eat every day, but, you know, as a treat, you can have it. To see him actually eat a pizza and to eat it that quickly, I was unbelievable. <laughs> Can't believe it.
Tom may be trying new foods, but he's still a long way from eating a whole meal. Hi, Charlotte. Hello. Charlotte has arranged to meet him in a cafe to hone his sandwich-making skill. Why is this not going down? Then they retire for a cosy lunchtime date. Master chef. OK. OK, you're off. Tom is quick to start, but can he persevere and finish his meal this time instead of just giving up? Difficult. <laughs> Difficult to eat. OK, that's fine. We've got time. But Tom is taking one very small step at a time. After 40 minutes of baby bites, he finally tries a bigger mouthful. You all right? <laughs> Carried on chewing it. Just got stuck. <laughs> oh! But you know what? No harm done. No, yeah, no harm done. Yeah, no harm done. Part of the reason that you managed to finish more than you've ever finished. Because I sat here for longer. Yeah, sat here for longer, much more relaxed. And therefore, you were able to chew. Because the only way that you're going to train yourself to bring up to larger meals is to eat more slowly. Just because I've started trying food, it doesn't mean that it's still easy. It's still going to be really hard. And I think today brought that to my eyes. So it's going to be tough, but I've got to keep pursuing at it. Uh -oh, uh -oh. With less than three weeks to go, Charlotte thinks he's ready to wave goodbye to his greasy best friends. Tom, it's time to ditch the chips. Here are some alternatives to help you go cold turkey. I've got to get rid of them forever. I think this is number seven. Can you believe that I beat number seven before it beat me? <laughs> it's gone. Having made it to half time in his dietary makeover, Tom takes time out on the footy field. But when faced with temptation, Tom just can't resist. <laughs> Maybe if the sandwiches were something different, I'd try them. But it's that white soft bread again, isn't it? That's what I don't get on with. Teammates are quick to volunteer their own theories about his freaky eating. It's how I see it. I, I think it's, I think it's the um, parents' fault. And I, I don't mean to say that about your parents. No, nah, because my other sisters eat, but they tried to force me to eat. I don't know. I mean, you're, you're one of these people, if you were like me, you'd need clarification of what it was, wouldn't you? You'd need to know what it was that yeah, stopped totally. you. Yeah, that's, totally. That's why, that's why all people are different, aren't they? I don't need to know, you see. Yeah. I'm not bothered about that. I've just been bothered about how he's going to make me eat. Sort of come off the rails a bit yesterday. Yeah, it wasn't a good day yesterday. One bad day is not the end of the world. I've just got to stay positive, forget about that now, and carry on trying to get onto healthy foods. With Tom's commitment to the cause wavering and less than two weeks to go, it's time he confronted the cause of his eating problem. Unless you understand the past, you start making the same mistakes in the future as well. So the aim of today is to get him to look at the past and see how there's other issues going on here. That if we can understand them, they're going to actually unlock his future. Felix has brought Tom to the plantation garden in Norwich. Using the steps up the terracing to represent Tom's life, he wants to demonstrate how key events may have affected his eating. These beautiful steps provide a wonderful metaphor for life's development. Okay. And I think here we are at the first zigzag. I think what may have happened is you're an only child for a while, and then suddenly your sister was born 30 months later, which is quite a close gap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes there's sibling rivalry around that. Your mum said that. When she was first presenting you with new foods and you didn't like it, you get a bit, you get a bit upset. Tantrums. You'd have yeah. a tantrum. But then your sister 
would get upset at you being upset and in order to pacify your sister, <laughs> your mum would actually give you what you wanted. And that way, she sort of kept the peace with both of you. Yeah, it's a bit sad, really, isn't it? Because my sister's a year younger than me. Yeah. And then I've stayed at her level, but she's been ever able to advance and I didn't. Well, I think that's a really good point. There's one more reason why I think that may have happened, which represents a second zigzag here. So let's go up to that one. Okay. It seems to me from what, what we've discussed in the past that your mum was quite indulgent to you as a boy and then your sisters and your friends also seem to be quite mothering as well. Yes, everybody's sort of looking out for me. Exactly. But I think this has led to you feeling safe or in your comfort zone, needing your family or then your friends around you. And you told me once, when you were 13, you are playing for a team, you actually got scouted by a professional football team. Mm. Now, that would be every young boy's dream. Yeah. But what you told me is that you felt really uncomfortable being with a different team, and that's what really put you off it. Yeah, I can see how it relates. Mm. But I, like you're saying, I haven't stepped out of that safety net. Here we come to the third. Let's take a vantage point. Over here, Tom, this is the course of your metaphorical development. We've been walking up these steps. 12 months. <laughs> yeah, 12 months, and then as a teenager, and then all the way to when I first worked with you. And what I saw was a 26-year-old man on this kiddie diet. Mm -hmm. So something has not developed um, in an adult way there. You weren't allowed to train your independence muscles, so to speak. Then this is what happens. Yeah, so that's why I stuck with exactly that diet. Yeah. I never wanted to try anything new because I didn't know if it felt, to me, unsafe. Yeah. How would you like to see your future, Tom? I would like to, in the future, um, move out of home, yeah. have a family, a couple of kids, and progress to the next levels at work as well. Let's go yeah. to your future and feel what it's like for you here. How does it feel like here? Yeah, it feels good. It feels really good, doesn't it? And in order for you to make that future reality, as you look back on your life, what was needed at 26 to make this future become true? For me to finally admit to myself um, the changes that I needed to make in my life, like I needed to stop everybody looking after me and me, me take my own responsibility for my eating. Um, and not just my eating, just me in, in everything, in everyday life. I think today's session was very useful for Tom. He seems to have realised that it's about themes and his development rather than one specific incident. He's beginning to join all those dots together today and realised that what's been holding him back is this babyfying aspect of his family that he's colluded with. I don't know, it feels a bit awkward, really, because you think 26 years old, I've wasted so much time, like a good eight, ten years, just got... You know, I've got to grow up, I suppose, I don't know. Tom's been trying new foods, but in less than a week, he will have to face an entire meal in front of his family. Before he can take on the challenge, he still has one final hurdle to overcome. Tom is making real progress, and we had a breakthrough in our last session, but I feel that Tom's parents are part of the problem. So today I've got something in mind that will help them to let go and allow Tom to start taking control of his life and therefore his eating. Felix is meeting Tom and his parents for one last session. The reason I brought you here today is for you to learn to override your instincts while you watch Tom doing something really scary. Right. Tom, how do you feel about this at the moment? What, yeah, what, fine, yeah I'm, yeah, I'm quite happy to do it. This is the plane that's going to go up and it's going to jump out. Tandem jump. Mm. And that's not something that must be easy for a parent to watch their child do. Not really. No, not really. So, yeah. mm. so this is really a learning exercise. Yeah, for us. Yeah. <laughs> Are you nervous at all, Tom? Not really. Not really. Do you know how high we're going to go today, Tom? Probably about 15,000 feet. About 13,000 feet, yeah. Two and a half miles straight up. All right, cool.
Tom might be relaxed about the skydive, but watching from the ground, his parents are anything but. Oh, yes, you see that wobble then? <laughs> come back, right. come okay. back, come back to her. <laughs> Tom's having the time of his life, but Mum Jill isn't so keen. Seems to be an awful long time. That's unreal. Oh, excellent. We Good don't want to that. come down! <laughs> <laughs> oh. Easy. Oh, oh good. It's wonderful. <laughs> Oh, well Tom, done, you Tom. dare devil, you. Yes, Excellent. Oh, well done. <laughs> bit, it's the bit where you jump out the plane. <laughs> when, you're very, when you're just, like, oh. with the parachute up, it's always, like, oh, you just think, oh, I could just stay up here. <laughs> Having survived the skydive, it's time for a scarier prospect, confronting his parents. Walk me through what was going through your minds when you're watching Tom get up in the plane and then jump out. Well, scared for him, I think, to begin with. You know, right. A bit fearful. When you were sitting in the plane, I, I thought to myself, oh, I felt for him there. I didn't really particularly think, oh, this is a good idea. Do you experience something similar when you see Tom struggling in other areas of his life, especially around food? Yeah. If you know he's uncomfortable in a situation, you'll try and perhaps help him get out of the situation, you know, so that he doesn't feel uncomfortable. Mm. We need uh, his family and his friends to realise that if they step in, loving intentions to save him, it's actually not training him in the healthiest way down the line. But basically, the whole summer of it all is that I have to grow up and start doing things for myself, and stop letting everybody take care of me. You've come to that conclusion yourself? Well, I've come to that conclusion with help. Yeah. Mm. I'm, I'm... But, it's, but it's my conclusion, really. Yeah, I think perhaps we, we don't actually see it like that, no. because we're just saying, well, Tom doesn't like to eat any other kinds of foods, and this is what Tom's like, and if he wants to change, he'll change. And yeah. without realising that actually yeah. we're stopping him from changing. And we've got to be strong yeah. to actually turn around and say, no, you've got to do this. Because when he hasn't got support that he's having at the moment, then, you know, he could just drift back into what he was before. And I don't want that to happen at all. Yeah. It felt good telling my parents that um, I need to sort of cut the strings, but it also, also made me feel quite embarrassed, really, because I shouldn't be having to say that at this age. I should have said it years ago, or I shouldn't have had to say it. I should have done it. So it's by having to tell him, it was always like, God, have I really got to say this? And it's, true fact is that I did need to tell them, and I do need to grow up. For Tom and his parents, Felix's words are starting to hit home. You know, we are approachable. We. I we never not thought that you weren't. Uh, yeah. It's just that I just think I don't really want to sit down and have that conversation. Whereas now I, mean. I don't mind. That's what I mean. You put up this wall yeah. where you wouldn't tell, you wouldn't express how you felt because you didn't want to get into it because you always thought. I'm sure you must have thought we were going to either be critical about it or moan. Not really. I just thought, it's just a conversation that I don't really want to have because it just sort of, it didn't interest me talking about it. So I, it's yeah. now I don't mind. I understand. You talk about the things that you think are a bit painful or a bit boring or whatever, and then they're really not that bad, like same with the food and stuff. the morning of the final challenge. Four weeks ago, Tom was surviving on a freaky diet of baked beans, chips and crisps, and he would make any excuse to avoid family meals. Today, he's about to face his biggest challenge ever, a sit-down turkey dinner with all of the Christmas trimmings. The worst possible outcome would be that I can't, I can't hardly eat anything, 
and then I'd still sit there with pretty much a full plate, then I'd be really disappointed. I'd be annoyed with myself. I feel like I'd let myself down and everybody else down. I think Tom's really nervous about today. He's um, not saying he is. He said he's fine, but I don't think he is. I can tell by the way he's acting that he's really nervous about it. I can't, I can't see Tom finishing the plate. I'd be amazed just seeing him put a few morsels in there and chewing it. Felix and Charlotte are on hand to offer Tom some final words of encouragement. Hey Tom. Hey Felix. How are you? Yeah. Nice to see you again. Hey, Hi Charlotte. Hello. 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 Yes. You good? Yeah. How are you? Not too bad actually. Yeah. You're a little bit nervous. Yeah. Oh, today, yeah. Well, what are you nervous about, Tom? Got all my family here, mm -hmm. and I want to do well as a way of sort of saying thank you and yeah. not let them down and let them see that I actually can do it. Yeah. Do you know what you're doing? What you do a lot here, which is thinking too much. Oh God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just simplify it down. You know, I'm you, just going to relax like... and just take it as another meal. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah, do that. You've already conquered your fears. You've already eaten new foods. You know you can do it. And if you relax into it, it's going to be even easier. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Take care. Enjoy Good luck. We'll catch up with you at the end. Yeah, you will do. Thanks. Bye. All right. See ya. If he can overcome his nerves, then yeah. he's going to do well. I hope he can do it. I hope he can enjoy it. Christmas dinners used to fill Tom with dread. While everyone else tucked into turkey roast, he was left munching through a plate of chips and beans. Today, he'll be joining them. What do you expect to have for your dinner today? <laughs> <laughs> and will you enjoy it? No, but I'll give it a go. <laughs> they are being served up a turkey dinner with Brussels sprouts, roast potatoes, sausages and stuffing. Tom has never tried anything on the plate. I'm expecting okay. chips and beans to come out, to be honest. Oh, this isn't what like I expected. Oh, it looks yummy. <laughs> That's one bite down, but he still has a whole plate to go. I know. It is strange seeing you eat, Tom. Do you think really? Yeah. Very unusual. This has never happened before. I've never seen you with a plate in front of you. 40 minutes later, everyone but Tom has finished. But for him, this meal is about more than just the food. There's the bigger picture to it all, isn't there? Like, I want to be able to do, join in with things like this and not feel like I want to run away. Like, now I sit down and have a conversation with Mum and Dad at dinner time. Tom has managed to eat over half his plate of food. He's done better than his family ever expected. Yeah, I'm really yeah. That's, That's right, no, thanks for all coming. Yeah, I've enjoyed yeah, it. Yeah, you've done really well. Like Harry, Tom. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Hello, hello. How are you doing there? I ate quite a bit of the turkey. I ate a whole potato. I didn't like the um, Brussels, Brussels sprouts. sprouts. Yeah. I tried, the, I tried the stuffing. Favorite. I tried the stuffing, and I ate the two sausages. sausages covered in bacon. You ate in front of other people yeah. in this setting, which is unusual, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And oh, hello, hello. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I am listening. I was just looking at everybody else's, everybody else's plate mm. to see like how I can. Okay, pay. I mean, and you know, people do leave stuff, so you're absolutely on the right track here. Okay, so I just like to get some feedback on the family. What's it like for you to see Tom eating with you this way? It's lovely to see mm. him actually sit down and eat what we're eating, mm. and not for me not to actually feel he's you know sitting there suffering. The next step. Is for like I've been cooking, isn't there? Oh yes, yeah. I've got you a present. It's like an early birthday present, and I made it myself. <laughs> Tom Ball's dining room. Oh Mum's my menu. Gosh. Oh, oh that's that's very sweet. Fresh and delicious. Tom has given his mum an invitation to a gourmet meal cooked by himself for her birthday. It's really nice that he's actually picked out <laughs> everything that I like on the menu, which is very nice. So oh, come thank here. you. 
Yeah, I think you've done incredibly well. No, just really proud of you and really amazed. It's fantastic. Well, we did it all together, really, didn't we? Yeah, I know. So. Tom, you should be proud of yourself, and I hope everyone else is yeah, as well. Yeah, I'm really proud of them. I yeah. think you deserve a round of applause. Yeah, I mean, for my parents, I, you know, especially, well, both my mum and dad, I've never heard my dad like, say, I'm proud of you as much as he did today. And so with my mum, in a way. So, yeah, it's really good. And it's like, I don't know. It's just something I haven't really felt before. But yeah, it's good. One month on and Tom's kicked his kiddie diet and discovered a grown-up passion for food. So I'm eating a lot of pastas, they can mix grills. Anything they put in front of me, I'm quite happy to sit down and try it. And I don't fear it, I look forward to it. Good evening. Um, and my friends come over. When they come over, I cook for them. So what have we got then? Duck with your oranges, is it? Everyone calls me a fat feeder now, because everyone, I just want to cook for everybody. Dinner is served. <laughs> it looks like he's coming out of himself more, and he's all bubbly. and. I think he's conquered something pretty big for himself and I think he's uh, feeling happy about it. <laughs> Home life has improved and his future is looking rosier in more ways than one. Through changing his eating habits, he's also changed his whole personality and, and seemed to have grown up a lot more. Now that I've learned that if I really want to do something, I can, it's just made me, as a person, feel more relaxed and more positive, whereas before it was just eat to survive. <laughs>